Alongside treacherous labor camps, North Korea also runs torture prisons, where detainees are subjected to extreme forms of physical and psychological abuse. Despite the risks, many North Koreans continue to attempt to escape the country in search of a better life. But the journey is fraught with danger and uncertainty. In North Korea, human feces, known as night soil, is often collected and used as a form of fertilizer. 10 Uncovering Secrets of North Korea You'll not believe what we found! If it were all up to the North Korean government, they would want you to believe that their home is a lush, beautiful state where all the inhabitants are free and happy to express themselves in whatever way they will. However, this couldn't be farther from the truth. North Korea is a closed and secretive society, and so many things happen within the country that are not known to the outside world. Some of the things that are not fully known include the inner workings of the North Korean government, the extent of human rights abuses, and the true living conditions of the general population. Additionally, there is limited information available on the North Korean military, their nuclear weapons program, and the country's international relations. But thanks to a few brave whistleblowers who have snuck in and out of the territory, we have an idea of what goes on within those closed walls. Trust me, you will not believe what we found. Be sure to stick around to the end as number one would get you shaking in your bones. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Number 10 Electricity Failure North Korea has struggled with electricity shortages and blackouts for many years, which has severely impacted the country's economy and quality of life for its citizens. The power supply in North Korea is unreliable, and the country lacks the infrastructure and resources to generate enough electricity to meet the needs of its population. As a result, many areas of the country experience regular blackouts and power outages. The situation is particularly dire during the winter months when temperatures drop and heating demands increase. The government has attempted to address the issue by investing in new power plants and increasing the use of renewable energy sources. But progress has been slow due to limited resources and international sanctions. Would you live in a country without light? Comment totally or not ever below to let us know. Number 9 Arms Dealing North Korea's arms industry is state-controlled and operates under the umbrella of the country's military-industrial complex. It is also believed to be a significant source of revenue for the country, if not the largest. The industry includes companies that produce weapons and other military hardware as well as research and development facilities. The North Korean government has been known to sell weapons to other countries, including missile and nuclear technology and even small arms. The nation boasts of a significant stockpile of conventional weapons, including tanks, artillery, and rockets. It is also known to have a large arsenal of short- and medium-range ballistic missiles. North Korea has been accused of exporting weapons to a number of countries, including Iran, Syria, and Myanmar. They also have been linked to arms deals with non-state actors such as Hezbollah and Hamas. North Korea's nuclear weapons program has been a major concern for the international community, and the country has been accused of exporting nuclear technology to other countries such as Syria and Pakistan. North Korea has faced numerous sanctions and embargoes aimed at curbing its arms dealing activities. The United Nations has imposed several rounds of sanctions on North Korea in an attempt to limit its ability to trade in arms and other illicit goods. However, the country has shown a remarkable ability to evade sanctions and continue its arms deals, often by using front companies and other deceptive tactics. Number 8 Insurance Fraud What happens when you realize that there be mouth-watering insurance compensations and incentives should your nation suffer massive damages or loss? Yeah, that's right! Stage them! And that's exactly what the North Korean government has done over the years. The country runs a state-owned insurance company called Korean National Insurance Corporation or KNIC 
which has been accused of engaging in fraudulent activities as a way to generate revenue for the government. One of the ways in which the company is believed to generate revenue is by staging accidents and submitting false claims to insurance companies. They deliberately cause accidents or disasters, such as shipwrecks or fires, and then submit claims for the damages. There have been several cases in which North Korean vessels have been involved in brow racing incidents, which lead to suspicions that the country is using insurance fraud as a means of generating revenue. One example of North Korea's alleged involvement in insurance fraud is the case of the 2010 sinking of the South Korean warship, the Cheonan. An international investigation found that the ship had been torpedoed by a North Korean submarine, killing 46 sailors. However, North Korea denied responsibility for the incident, and it was later reported that the country had filed claims with international insurance companies for damages caused by the sinking. Another example is the suspicious fire that broke out at the Koryo Hotel in 2015. The hotel, which is one of Pyongyang's most prestigious, was partially destroyed in the fire, and several tourists were reportedly injured. It was later reported that the North Korean government had submitted an insurance claim for the damages caused by the fire. The cause of the fire was never officially determined, but there were suspicions that it may have been deliberately set as a way of generating revenue through insurance fraud. If you are the leader of North Korea, would you claim these insurance funds? Comment yes or no with the hashtag North Korea. Number 7. Labor Camps North Korea is known to operate a vast network of forced labor camps which are used to punish and control individuals who are seen as a threat to the regime. These camps, which are officially known as re-education or correctional facilities, are notorious for their harsh living conditions, including forced labor, inadequate food and medical care, and torture. The labor camps in North Korea are believed to hold hundreds of thousands of inmates, including political prisoners, defectors, and others who are seen as enemies of the state. Many of these inmates are subjected to forced labor in a variety of industries, including mining, agriculture, and manufacturing. Inmates are often forced to work long hours with little or no pay and are subject to physical punishment and abuse by their guards. The conditions in North Korea's labor camps have been widely condemned by the international community, with some likening them to the concentration camps of Nazi Germany. Despite the widespread attention and criticism, North Korea has continued to operate its labor camp system, and there have even been reports of new camps being built in recent years. Number 6. Deadly Migrations Now, no matter how upset you are with the living conditions in North Korea, escaping is not an option. Practically, you should see the nation as a utopia, whether it lives up to that claim or not. You cannot even run into neighboring nations for safety. Crossing the border from North Korea into China is extremely dangerous and can result in deadly consequences for those who attempt it. The North Korean government strictly controls the movements of its citizens and considers anyone who attempts to leave the country without permission to be a traitor. Individuals who are caught attempting to cross the border into China can face severe punishment, including imprisonment, torture, and execution. In some cases, the North Korean government has also been known to punish the family members of those who attempt to flee. Once in China, North Korean refugees are often forced to live in hiding, as the Chinese government frequently sends them back to North Korea, where they face further punishment. Those who are caught by the Chinese authorities can be subjected to deportation, imprisonment, and even forced labor. In addition to the dangers of escaping from North Korea, Citizens who remain in the country also face a range of human rights abuses. The government strictly controls access to information and restricts freedom of expression, assembly, and religion. Political dissent is not tolerated and those who are suspected of opposing the regime can be subjected to imprisonment, torture, and execution. Overall, the North Korean government's strict control over its citizens has created a culture of fear and repression, where basic human rights are routinely violated. Despite the risks, many North Koreans continue to attempt to escape the country in search of a better life. But the journey is fraught with danger and uncertainty. Would you rather escape to a life of hiding in China or remain in North Korea? 
Let us know in the comments below by typing of course or not really. Do not forget to use the hashtag strange and funny. Number 5 Torture prisons Alongside treacherous labor camps, North Korea also runs torture prisons, where detainees are subjected to extreme forms of physical and psychological abuse. These prisons are believed to be part of the country's larger system of political repression, which is aimed at maintaining the regime's grip on power. The torture prisons in North Korea are known for their brittle and inhumane conditions, including overcrowding, lack of food and medical care, and routine use of torture and other forms of physical and psychological abuse. Inmates are often forced to make false confessions and implicate others, leading to a cycle of suspicion and fear within the prison system. Many ex-prisoners describe the range of torture techniques used in these prisons, including beatings, electric shocks, for standing or sitting for long periods of time, and physical abuse. Some inmates have reportedly been subjected to pigeon torture, in which their hands are tied behind their backs and they are hung from the ceiling for extended periods of time. Number 4 Feces Harvesting In North Korea, human feces, known as night soil, is often collected and used as a form of fertilizer. This practice dates back many centuries in Korean history and continues to be used in some rural areas of North Korea where access to modern fertilizers is limited. Collecting night soil is typically done by a designated team of workers who travel door-to-door -door in the early morning hours, collecting buckets of human waste from individual households. The waste is then transported to collection centers, where it is treated to remove harmful bacteria and other pathogens. After treatment, the night soil is often used to fertilize crops in rural areas, where it is seen as a cheap and effective way to improve soil quality. However, the use of night soil as a fertilizer also poses significant health risks, as untreated human waste can contain a range of harmful pathogens and diseases. In recent years, the North Korean government has attempted to modernize the country's agricultural practices, in part by promoting the use of chemical fertilizers over traditional methods. However, due to the country's ongoing economic struggles and lack of resources, the use of night soil as a fertilizer continues to be common in some areas. Would you eat the crop if you knew it was grown with your own waste? Comment yes or no below to let us know. Number 3 a multi-level society North Korea has a three-tier societal system that divides the population into three categories based on their perceived loyalty to the regime. These categories are the core class, the wavering class, and the hostile class. The core class is made up of individuals who are seen as the most loyal to the regime who have the most privileges. This group includes high-ranking government officials, military officers, and their families. Members of the core class have access to the best jobs, education, and health care and are generally allowed more freedom of movement and expression. The wavering class is made up of individuals who are seen as less loyal to the regime or who have not demonstrated sufficient loyalty. This group includes ordinary citizens who have not shown enough enthusiasm for the regime or who may have committed minor offenses. Members of the wavering class have fewer privileges than the core class and may be subjected to greater scrutiny and control by the government. The hostile class is made up of individuals who are seen as the most disloyal to the regime. This group includes political rebels, defectors, and their families, as well as anyone else who is perceived as a threat to their regime. Members of the hostile class are subjected to the harshest forms of punishment, including imprisonment, forced labor, and execution. The three-tier societal system in North Korea is designed to maintain the regime's grip on power by rewarding loyalty and punishing rebellion. It creates a culture of fear and mistrust, where individuals are encouraged to inform on each other to avoid being seen as disloyal. Would you tell on your closest relation or friend just to get into the core class? Type yeah or never in the comments below to let us know. Number 2 Generational Punishments North Korea has a system of three generational punishment, which means that not only the accused individual but also their family members can be punished for the alleged crime. 
This system is based on the idea of guilt by association and is intended to maintain control over the population by creating a climate of fear and mistrust. What this means is that if an individual is accused of a crime or of being disloyal to the regime, not only are they punished, but their entire family can also be punished. The family members of the accused can be sent to prison camps or be subjected to other forms of punishment, such as forced labor or public executions. In some cases, the punishment can extend three generations of the accused person's family, including grandparents, parents, and children. The practice of three-generational punishment is just one of the many ways in which the North Korean government controls its population through fear and intimidation. Despite the widespread criticism of this practice, it is believed to still be in use in North Korea today. Number 1. Cannibalism In the mid-1990s, North Korea experienced a devastating famine, resulting in the deaths of an estimated 3.5 million people. With food shortages and the military confiscating what little remained, many North Koreans resorted to extreme measures to survive, including eating pets, crickets, tree bark, and even children. There are accounts of people being executed for cannibalism, although fear of it may have been more common than the actual practice. Would you eat a fellow human to survive? Let us know in the comments below by typing yes or no. These were the top 10 strange and funny secrets you've probably never heard of from North Korea. Which do you think was the strangest or funniest? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this one, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. I hold him up. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe.